see our full lineup of award-winning bandsaws at grizzly.com. Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Last time I finished shaping the rear legs, but I had not cut them to length yet. I've started on the two seat rails, which are gonna be made from five quarter lumber. I'm gonna get a nice straight edge on one side and then I'll cut them to rough width at the table saw. I have both of the seat rails and the lower backrest rail cut to rough width and length. The next thing I need to do is flatten one face and then I'll plane them to thickness. With those components plane to thickness, I can edge joint one side nice and square and rip them to their final width. I need to start working on the two lower stretchers and the three seat rails. And for that, I'm gonna use eight quarter stock. Before I can plane the stretchers and the lower seat rails to thickness, I need to flatten one face. Now that I made one flat face and planed them to thickness, I need to get one edge nice and square to one of the faces and then rip them to their final width at the table saw. With the freshly edge jointed side against the fence, I'll cut them to their final width. I'm about to start cutting pieces to their final length. Now my seat rails and my lower backrest rail are a little bit too long for my ladder gauge. So I've clamped on some scrap wood to the left hand side to act as a stop lock. I can also cut the front legs, the armrests, and the stretchers to length now too. For the joinery for this piece, I'm gonna use half inch floating tenons. Now I had to go out and buy a new router for my mortiser because my old router didn't accept half inch shank router bits. I'm gonna make the mortises for the joinery for the rear legs the same way. If I keep the mortise for the seat rail the same depth as the mortise for the back uh, lower rail, the two tendons will actually intersect uh, inside the leg. So I have two options, I think. I can angle the tendons so that they meet at a 45 where they intersect, or I can shorten one of the mortises and have a shorter tendon for the seat rail, the lower seat rail. And that's what I think I'll do. I'll just, for this mortise, I'll have a, just a little bit of a shorter tendon. to complete all of the floating tenon joinery, I need to make end grain mortises and all of the rails, one on each side. Next, I'm gonna start working on the joinery for the crest rail to the legs. Now that's also gonna be done with a floating tenon and I have the back dry assembled and this is going to make lining up or measuring out for the mortises in the crest rail a lot easier. Before I can make the joinery and the armrests, I need to cut them to match the angle of the back leg, which is 9 degrees.
Now I can make the end grain mortise in the armrest that has the angle that we cut at the table saw to match the backrest. Now if I were doing integral tenons, which has the tenon cut from the same piece of wood as the stock, this can get a little bit tricky. But by making a floor to tenon, not an issue. I'm going to cut the curve in the three seat support rails. I've already drew a curve onto one of them, and I'm going to cut it out the bandsaw and use this one as a template for the other two. Before I trace this curve out onto the other two pieces, I took a piece of flexible scrap wood and with some spray adhesive, I attached a piece of sandpaper. Now I can just smooth out this curve. Before I can shape the armrest, I still need to make the mortises for the floating tenon where the front leg will meet the front of the armrest. Mm -hmm. 